Alaska and Corla, a story of a buried past, uncovering buried lives and a buried truth. This report in some areas confirms what was long suspected, in other parts reveals a more nuanced and more challenging narrative. The Commission of Investigation has spent many years finding the truth, so we can now begin to provide some measure of healing and reconciliation, and above all, make restitution. As a country, we owe a debt to Judge Yvonne Murphy, Dr. William Duncan, and Professor Mary Daly, and their expert team, and above all, to the survivors who provided testimony, and to the work of people who brought the issue of mother and baby institutions to the fore. A special mention must be made of Catherine Corliss, whose painstaking scholarship and humble compassion lit the candle that allowed us to reopen and read this dark chapter of our history. As Thonishta, as a former Taoiseach, as a leader of my party, which was in government for some of this period, as a member of the government that established this commission, as a citizen and as a man, I want to offer my apology to the children who were hidden away at birth, discarded in death, and in life treated as a commodity are as second-class citizens, and to the mothers for whom there was no option but to enter a mother and baby institution and give up their child. They may have consented, but it was not the free and informed consent in the way we understand that concept today. We apologize and we ask for their forgiveness. Alas, Cancorla, I think this report shames Irish society entire. Women pregnant outside of marriage, some very young, some victims of rape, were not supported by their families, community, or the father of the child. They turned to the church and state for refuge, and while they got refuge, it was a cold and often cruel one. Let there be no doubt, church and state ran these homes together, operating hand in glove equally culpable, and did so with the full knowledge and acquiescence and even support of wider society. Church and state reinforced social prejudice and judgment when they should have tried to change it. Let's not forget that illegitimacy was not a social prejudice. It was the law of the land, a law passed in 1931 in this house by our forebears, and as was often the case in those days, a law very much guided by the Catholic social teaching of the day. For too many years, Ireland was a cold house for children born outside of marriage, and this report exposes the chilling consequences of such a mindset. Too many children were seen as a stain on society, but the truth is it was our society that was deeply stained. And as the report shows, this was a stifling, oppressive, and deeply misogynistic culture, a cold house for most of its people for most of its existence. It's shocking to read that more than 9,000 babies died in these institutions. I dare not call them homes. But in some ways, it's more shocking that this is not a revelation. The statistics were known at the time. It was known that children in mother and baby institutions were more likely to die in infancy than other children, including other children born out of, outside of marriage. There was no public outcry, no cabinet members for the first 50 years, no dull debates or motions, few media inquiries or interest. They were seen as second-class citizens, lesser mortals to be treated as such, perhaps for their whole lives, solely due to the, due to the circumstance of their conception and birth. It was a conspiracy of shame and silence and cruelty. Reading the report, I have to say I particularly felt for the children who were boarded out. This is not fostering as we know it today. While there were exceptions, children boarded out were not raised as one of the family. Boys were often used as unpaid farm labor and girls as carers or house servants. Their interests did not come first or second. Their education was unimportant. This was profoundly wrong and they continue to suffer for it today. Las Cancorla, I believe the survivors of the mother and baby institutions, alongside the survivors of industrial schools, constitute Ireland's stolen generation. As a society and a state, we stole from them the lives that they should have had, raised by their mothers in their own communities, known to their fathers, brought up to believe they were as good as anyone else, 
and could, and could grow up to be anyone they wanted to be. It is late in the day, but now is our opportunity to make restitution on behalf of the generations that preceded us. The means by which we do so should be guided by the men and women who survived these institutions. They should be given time to read and reflect on the report, and they should inform us as to the next steps. The Commission in its recommendations points the way. As the Taoiseach said, a formal state apology, appropriate memorialisation, better access to health services and counselling and housing, access to records and information about themselves, including their birth cert and medical records, financial reparations, a repository to archive all of the documents relating to these residential institutions so further study can be done, assistance with advocacy, and of course we should not forget the survivors now living overseas and in Northern Ireland where inquiries are now just beginning. This report teaches us that when good people believe bad things about others, terrible actions can be rationalised away. There are lessons here for us as a society and as a state and a meaningful response has to go beyond denouncing the horrors of the past from the safety of the present. People want to know their own truth, to find part of themselves that was for too long forbidden or kept secret, and we must facilitate that. The Commission was an excavation into our past, and it succeeded in uncovering part of our collective history and heritage. What we know now is compelling and crying out for resolution. And as a government, we will do what we can to provide it. Today is a day of atonement when we express our horror and sorrow at the story of Ireland told in this report, when we promise to do right by those who suffered. But I do believe in doing so, we should not lose sight of that hopeful story that's also told in the Commission's report. It tells a story of a country that has changed and progressed, that's far from perfect, but has got kinder and better and more compassionate, more loving and less judgmental and less misogynistic as the years passed. The flatlets and houses of the 1980s and 1990s were very different to the mother and baby institutions of the 50s and 60s and the county homes and the workhouses that preceded them. The Commission tells a story of enormous change. This is a story of social progress as the years and decades moved on. Legal adoption in the 50s, sex education in our schools, social welfare payments for lone parents which gave them real options from the mid-70s, the introduction of free health care for pregnant women and newborns, changing attitudes to sexual morality and personal freedoms, a less deferential view of the church, a more questioning attitude to the state, legalised contraception, the Status of Children Act which abolished the concept of illegitimacy from our law, the right to divorce and remarry, the slow but steady dismantling of the architecture of patriarchy on which our state was formed. Huge improvements in maternity care and neonatal care leading to a situation whereby death and pregnancy are in the early years of life is now exceptionally rare in this country. The Children's Rights Amendment to our Constitution. New laws and new attitudes to consent and domestic violence. Children first and the introduction of mandatory reporting of child abuse and the ongoing decongregation of our residential institutions for people with disabilities or mental illness in favour of community living, often facing objections. So we should not be afraid or embarrassed to reflect on how much we have changed as a society and as a state, and how far we've come. Doing so does not belittle in any way the maltreatment or experiences of women and children in the mother and baby institutions. Rather, it reinforces how awful they truly were. And the fact that today's standards are better is not an excuse for the poor standards of the past. And nor should we think that today our standards are good enough for the future. People in decades hence may look back on this time and point to our failings too and have to apologise for them. So as we read this report, both hopeful and shameful, it should spur us on to do better in the years to come not just for the women and children who survived the mother and baby institutions, but also the women and children of today and of the future. Today, we understand a little better the tears that were shed over many decades by those who were judged so harshly, by those who had their human rights dishonored. 
We cannot change the past, but we can rededicate ourselves to giving people their truth, recognizing the hurt and damage that was caused, saying sorry, making amends, and then seeking forgiveness. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Thornister.